Like when you want to hear the rest of the album, you have to go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's with my great honor and pleasure to introduce Al Di Miola. This was um, uh, a pretty famous recording, the Friday Night record, which um, the way we had mixed it, we had to, I was on this side, Paco was on this side, and hey, John um, was center channel, Al. John McLaughlin. I'm yeah. so sorry, can you hold down the power button on your mic? I'm so sorry. It's oh, okay. The <laughs> Maybe because you it's on the, on the, yeah, that part. So that we can, yeah. Which one? Uh, it should be the top left. I got it. Okay. Okay, so sorry about that. Oh. How's that? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, we we had gone. Uh, got, we started the tour. I must have been twenty three. I don't know what I was, but I was pretty young. And I joined this uh, this trio. Then um, we had an impresario. Uh, agent from, from London, Barry Marshall. He now books McCartney and Elton John, but he stopped in the business with us. And he booked a two month tour starting in Scandinavia. He came down through Germany. We did a lot in Germany. And we recorded all the shows. We did the rest of Europe, Belgium, France, Italy, Switzerland, Austria. And then we went over to the States and we finished a two month tour in San Francisco, and those were the, we listened to all the tapes, but we found that the last two shows were, were the most magnificent. And uh, so we, we mixed that record the Friday night, and then of course we, uh, we were left with all of these boxes of tapes. And since the, the mixing took place in White Plains, New York, um, they asked what we want to do with the tapes, and I said, well, I live across the river, you know, you can store them in my, my house. And, uh, and that's when I got the idea in 2020 when we were pretty much uh, idle at home to listen to the tapes again and see if they're hopefully not damaged. And um, it, we did a, a baking process to preserve the sound, which we had redone. We did, we, we did it two times and had the tapes restored to full uh, audio capacity, and uh, and then uh, we took the alternate songs that were not released on Friday night. We made a whole work of uh, Saturday night, which was uh, a pretty nice discovery for, for a lot of the fans. A lot of them didn't know we did a Saturday night. In fact, John McLaughlin didn't know we, we played a Saturday <laughs> night 40 years later. You know, so anyway, the the whole experience of the years, of 40 plus years of dealing with record companies, um, I've never had one so fruitful and, uh, and, and fulfilling as the one I had to deal with A.B. Vaughn. I mean, she was so meticulous and went out on, on, on a limb so many times that I was, I was, I was really captivated with, with the, the attention to detail. I've never seen in all my years of recording with Columbia, Sony, and all the other labels and combined. Uh, and she really made this record happen. I mean, I did, I did a lot of the editing. You did and all I'll, the I'll tell the story about the editing. Sure. Because I, I spent, with my engineer, a good, probably a couple of months, editing to fit the sides of the vinyl. It was very hard to do to cut parts of solos out. You know, I, so I had to sit and make the determination for John Paco's deceased, so I had to really think about keeping the, the best aspects of the record intact and dissecting what we could lose in order to meet the size of the vinyl. We spent all of our time editing, 
since it was the second night, it was the same microphone, same ambience, same everything. We didn't pay a lot of attention to A being the right, sorry, A being. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we didn't pay a lot of attention to, to actually A being against Friday night because it was the same theater. So when Bernie Gridman, the mastering god on the West Coast, he heard it, he goes, it sounds like a different, a different record. So A.B. calls me and says, Al, are you sure it's the same place? I said, absolutely. All the boxes are labeled perfectly. She goes, well, you know, she brought up a point. I said, did you A.B. a bachelor Friday? And I said, actually, no. We just spent all the time editing. So she had a point. So we went back and we had, we remixed the whole thing. Because there are certain levels of ambient mics you have to have to match the same ambient quality of Friday night. So we had to do a whole new remix. Before that, we did a, a rebaking at the Skywalker Studio in Northern California. Did a phenomenal job. Brought it up again, another level. And uh, a lot of people are saying that the Saturday night sounds better than the Friday night. Now, mind you, these records were sitting in my basement for 43 plus 44 years or whatever. And I had no idea what it was, you know, if they were even gonna be up to par. The boxes looked like they were shredded through a machine. It was, there was some water damage, mold, the tapes were old. So it yeah. required a lot of restoration. And we took it to the world famous Skywalker and we restored all the you know, old movies and, and uh, very difficult projects. Yeah, AB, AB made it all happen. I was very impressed, uh, very impressed. Where were you in the 70s, by the way? We could have used you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You made it happen. You made it, well, you, you made it happen. It was, uh, I mean, it started with me calling John and convincing him that we did two nights in San Francisco. We did. It's John, I know it was a long time ago, but you know, COVID is upon us. We should maybe talk about this now before, uh, <laughs> you know. And he was a little, a little against it in a way. He almost didn't believe we had something. I said, well, let me, let me. I thought, all right, all right, send me something. So I sent him a track. And I, then I couldn't get him on the phone for a while. I said, I said, oh boy, maybe he doesn't like it. So eventually got him. I, I kept on it. I kept on it. I really kind of resurrected a friendship. And he says, it sounds phenomenal. He said, keep it all. And then I sent him another two tracks. Phenomenal, keep it all. Don't edit anything out. I said, well, John, <laughs> you know, we gotta, we gotta make vinyl, a vinyl work. You can't have 45 minutes on one side of a vinyl, you know. So that, that was the thing. He said, well, it's up to me, I, I, I keep it all. I said, well, okay, we have to deal with reality and the fact that it was COVID and there were no flights coming in from Europe. It looks like I have the balls in my court. You gotta trust me. And uh, he had a hard time with that. However, in the end, he congratulated A.B. He even congratulated me, which was very hard to believe I would get a congratulation from John on anything, but, but it was a nice thing. And I, I said, well, you know, your wife writes a very nice email. No. no. <laughs> so that's it. Um. We made a documentary, it's on Elusive Disc's YouTube channel, it's Elusive Disc, D-I-S-C, and it's like a 30 minute of the making of Saturday night, and we kind of filmed our entire process, talk about editing. It was like probably 80 hours of film edit down to 30 minutes, so that was not easy. Um, but it tells us, you know, what we did, the, 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 the engineers we worked with, the manufacturing, how we, develop the jacket, because the jacket's made with uh, metallic ink and two-color metallic ink. And this type of metallic ink is difficult because you have to lay the sheet, lay the silver down, and let it dry for 48 hours before running the second coat. So that took up a lot of uh, press time. And we did it during COVID, so it was a very, uh, nothing was normal, nothing worked normal during, during COVID. Do you have a Friday night version? Yes. So, before we talk about a little bit about Al's body of work and what he's doing now and, what, and, and projects he's currently working on, we're gonna play Friday Night in San Francisco on 45 by Impex Record, and it was this album and this project
that led me to working with Al and to really expand my catalog, which I'm really more stuff. So, uh, can we put on Friday night? Yeah, the first try, that's the most noted. when I don't play it on my record, I have it streaming in the background when I'm cooking, a little wine. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're driving, though. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to podcasts when I drive. Anyway, so I have to say that was a very quiet LP, so I'm very happy. Dead silent. So that was the 45 version. Um, Al, can we have you come back up and and would you like to share it with the audience, you know, outside of Friday and Saturday, what are you working on right now? What are you doing, uh, transforming? Because you're doing a lot of composition. Yes. Um, 2020, when, when COVID hit, and, you know, I was kind of glued to the television, watching the news. And, uh, it wasn't it wasn't anything that was really uh, <laughs> pleasant. So uh, a way to, to combat that was, was to just submerging myself down in the studio and just start writing because whenever I either wrote music or read music it, it completely took my mind off of anything surrounding that was going on so um, the writing came fairly easy it was pouring out so I just wrote I kept writing and um, yeah it turned into uh, almost a two and a half year project where I wrote so much probably out of a 16 new pieces of music that will will stretch out over two two albums. So it'll be a double album. And um, I called uh, your music up and I, I told them about it. And uh, I was expecting them to say, you can't do a duet. Who's going to buy a double record? And they were really happy instead. That didn't happen. So, you know, this, this record will, uh, it started out as a solo guitar record, solo acoustic, real purist kind of record. And, um, it just got carried away as time went on. So half of it will remain so the other half will have a more full production, including percussion and bass and electric guitar on top of acoustic guitar and some keyboard stuff. So I'm doing mostly everything. Um, it wasn't easy to bring my musicians from Europe to the States at the time. And then at the end of June, I go to Milan to record um, some symphonic parts that will uh, go on top of some of the tracks that I have already. And then July will be a mixing period. It probably won't come out until the first quarter of next year. But this production is coming back to, to uh, somewhat normal, so it won't be so long like Saturday night. It took us two years. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And this, I want, I want all of what was created in that two and a half year period, right, to come out. I don't want to release like another record years from now of that period. That's the mood I was in then. You know, and it saved my life, pretty much. Save your well, the sanity, yeah, because we, were, we didn't know what was going to happen to humanity in that time, <laughs> you know. Yes. So, luckily we came out of it, but it was rough. And on some, in some ways it was great, because I, I think I got to another plateau as, as a composer, you know. Which most of what you heard back here was improvisation. And, that's, and that was uh, solely due to the fact that we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers. So we had those extra five, six, seven hours a day to practice our asses off in our hotel rooms, knowing that that night we'd be competing against one another and you know, healthy competition. And the audience got the benefit of that. You know? And then the record came out and surprised uh, Columbia Records, which became Sony. They were very shocked that how well that was received throughout the world. You mentioned during our interview that um, you guys were been touring for like two months. Two months. So Friday, Saturday was like the 
end of your tour. So yeah, you the chop, the, the technical chops were so right on, and our, you know, the musical dialogue was was really, really at the top. You know. were speaking to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The interplay is really what made it very happening. That last piece, by the way, was just me and Paco. So there's there's three duets and there's a couple of trio pieces on the first record, but on the new record, Saturday night, there's four, I think, four or five trio pieces, no duets, and then you have three solo pieces. Yeah, that's quite different. They're all different. They're Friday. Yeah. Different performances. Right. So. We want to reach out to the audience. Does anybody have questions they like to ask Al? Yes. Anything What's your you favorite guitar? <coughs> hmm? What's your favorite guitar? My favorite guitar now, uh, on, on a lot of the records I've made in the last 15, 20 years have been with the nylon guitar made in Madrid, called Conde Hermanos. Mm -hmm. They have a signature model that, that I have a special pickup on it. Yeah. That, that guitar I'm playing from that speaker. Uh, in fact, Pop was playing a Conde Hermanos back in 1980, and I was playing an Ovation. An Ovation was a steel string guitar that um, myself and Glenn Campbell made popular. And it was made by an aerospace company. So this guy that owned the aerospace company loved guitar. So he was uh, the, the maker of helicopters for Vietnam. So he had, a, he had left over all of the shell helicopter shell, which is called Lyricord. So he, he managed to use the back of the guitar, which was round, like a helicopter, right? And that that's inhibited the, the amount of feedback. So you can actually turn his acoustic guitar up if you're playing with a band. It also had a plug-in. So it was it was somewhat between electric and acoustic, in a way. More acoustic, but, but it was a unique sound. Yeah. What else?